Okay, welcome here on this stage, and uh, today we will talk how to manage innovative projects. We have been hearing, uh, listening to all the, of these people that are speaking about the new technologies, new processes, new products, new services, and so on. And today and now we will actually speak about how to manage innovative projects because it's not easy. It's not the same how to do it, you know, like a regular projects. So a little agenda for the start. I know that this is maybe not usual on this type of the conference, but uh, this is something that will guide you through this presentation. First thing, actually, I will set the stage by telling you why I am here, not you, but I'm here to speak about this and about the innovation. We'll talk very shortly about what is actually the innovation, and then we'll see how makes innovation projects and what the, uh, it makes uh, the innovation projects different from the regular projects. We'll talk about the business perspective, the project management perspective, and how the handover from the project to the so-called BAO, what we, it means business as usual means, and where the innovative project is in the ideation project. So first, you know, I, I was, has, has been announced, but the thing is that I'm leading a great team of professionals that are innovating for a number of years. I will not say how much because maybe some of you are younger. I see in this line, in this row, they are very young at <laughs> this year. So I will just go to the slide that shows how many international awards we have been won, wanting, you know, all around the street, all around the world. And this is where, you know, our five patents in IT industry nine trademarks, and 99 awards. This is not PR joke. This is actual number that we have, uh, you know, put before this uh, presentation. We have been doing a great job in getting from idea to the innovation and making innovation product, from innovation to the product. We have been monetizing innovation in different ways, and these are some of our products. This is how they look like. And I must tell you, that the technologies that we are talking today on this conference uh, here, we have been using these technologies for a number of years because artificial intelligence is not from the yesterday. Of course, in the last past year, it reaches its peak, you know, in, of course, uh, reaching the technology capabilities, but also reaching the broad audience and affecting all our lives. But we have been using computer vision, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on for a number of years now. And these are the products that we have been developing and that we are selling all over the world. So, after the setting the stage, what is actually innovation? Often people mistake idea by in innovation. The idea is not innovation. Innovation is a process to, of getting the idea from you know, some abstract thing to, the, to build a new methods, new products, new services, solutions that have significant impact and positive value to something. It involves transforming creative concepts in the tangible outcomes that improve efficiency and effectiveness or address unmet needs. Innovation is not limited to the technological advancements and encompasses novel approaches uh, of to problem solving. So we have some problem and we need to solve it. And it also contributes to the organizational practices, business model innovations, and it's in, it is in its core, innovation involves challenging the status quo, thinking outside the box and taking calculated risk to drive progress and achieve breakthrough outcomes. So, what makes innovative projects different than regular projects? There are two perspectives that need to be looked. There are business perspective and there is a project management perspective. Managing projects, innovative projects, is not the same as managing the regular projects. If you apply the same methodology, the same way of managing the innovative projects as you have used to do with regular or standard projects, you are in the risk to choke the innovation, to stop the innovation to happen. 
So you need to take a different approach. So how we actually develop a digital project? Because I am talking from the experience of the developing digital products, di digital services, but this for sure can be applied to many different industries. But my experience and experience my team is in digital projects. So first step is idea generation. So this is where, you know, we are actually, wa we want to solve some problem, to invent something that is not already there, or we can say there, there is something, you know, there's some methods, there's some services, there's some products, but they are not very good. Or, so we can improve them on some way, or we can approach to this problem like completely thinking about something different that will replace this and so on and so on. The second step, market research and idea screening, is the, the point where the business gets in. So we are thinking how to solve the problem, we, but we need to set up something which is called baseline. And the baseline is a business process, business case study. And then we are going to the planning, generating minimal viable product, developing and testing. We are taking care of the costs and planning for go to the market and commercialization. So how are we are approaching to the business perspective and what are the steps that we need to do? The first step is a problem solving. You cannot you know, solve difficult problems in innovative ways with the standard tools. So you need to use several techniques and several tools that are out there that you can use. And of course, some of them are bet, better fin, uh, fitted to the uh, you know, beginning of the process of the creating a, uh, innovation from the idea. And some of them are better fitted uh, later on when you are using all these ideas from the huge cloud and create something that is concentrated, that is you know, like uh, something that you can actually deliver in some period of time. So we are using techniques like design thinking or creative problem solving. Those methods and those techniques are not from yesterday. You know, a lot, you know, in, in the time, in the past, the problem was pro people were using those techniques to solve complex problem. And you, as you can see, creative problem solving, this is far on the right, there's only four steps. But those four steps are something that you need to train like you are trained uh, sports, like you are training football or basketball, like we are in this you know, sports arena here. But you need to train your team how to think out of the box. But at the moment, when you get from idea to the innovation, then you want to create a project that will deliver innovative product. And then you are back into the box because you want to manage the project. You don't want to have a chaos in the pro project as you had when you are doing ideation, you know, creating ideas to sell the problems. Okay, so there are different tools that you can use, like brainstorming, fishbone diagrams, flow charts, and so on. So all of these visual tools help you to create a vision. And this is very important because comparing to the regular projects, when you are creating a business case, a business model, you don't want to spend a lot of time to do that. You need to make it in a very short period, but you need to make sure that everybody in your team realize and they know what is your vision, what is the value that you want to achieve. So the business model canvas is something, a tool that we are usually using because you see in the middle is the value proposition. And this is the most important thing when you, we are talking about the innovation projects. So from the business perspective, from the product owner perspective, it is very important to communicate to the team what are the values or increase in the values comparing to the, some product that are on the market you want to achieve. And the team, depending on their role in the team, are there to innovate. So the business, you know, the pro product owner will not tell the technical guys how to realize the service of the product, whatever. 
those people will actually think how to use available techniques, available technology, or some new technology to achieve you know, these values that are in place for the team. So, so some, sometimes people say it's not important, important to have a business case for the innovative project. This is wrong. The business case is important step to provide a baseline justification to proceed and use it to compare it against what you have in the vision when you are tracking your project you know, in the phases, in the stages. So this is where you go back, and this is not something that is fixed. This document should be fluid. This document should be open to new ideas, to new information, because when you start the innovative project, there was uncertainty about what you actually can or should achieve. You have some vision, you have some idea. It's like you, you do the, the draft of some you know, house, and then you go to the cycles, you know, the stages, iterations, and through this iteration, you have a better and better picture. You are thinking and working on the details, and at the end of the story, you have very detailed plan how to do it. But then, it's not just a plan, it's not just a business case, it's also, you know, a final product that is defined as that. So, what are the advices how to, you know, handle the business case and accelerating the business case to create them faster than usual in usual uh, projects? So, innovation is something that does not exist. You cannot predict any single thing before you start. But you can imagine a lot or manage a lot of things. First, you know, time box the process. What does it mean? This means that you for this forces the team to deliver a minimal viable business case, not a product, a business case. Business case development should not have numerous iteration. It cannot last for months or years. It should be short, you know, and what is important, why to have this business model canvas and business case is to involve all the stakeholders, customers, and if possible, end users. You know the difference between customers and users? The customers are those that pay for the project. End users are the users that are actually using you know, the result of the project. So the business case process is essential, essential to provide a credibility and making a decision later on to proceed because we will ch ch do the chunks you know, of the project in the small stages and at every stage we will, you know, uh, compare the results to the business case, the business model canvas, to see if we achieved what we have actually committed to do. And detailed instruction researches is not necessary. You know, you, you do not need to research a lot of things. You need to research just enough to pro provide justification and make uh, just enough details that are available to the stakeholders that they can rely on it. And do this feedback part that enables you to fail fast if the project is not going anywhere, or better off to pivot. What does it mean? So we, we can see that it, this is not like we have imagined. The results are not good. The values are not achieved. So what we do? We are thinking how we can use what we have developed until now and to see if we can do something else. Then what we are doing, we are actually updating the business model and trying again with the new baseline. Also, we need to do this in the stages. Why? We, we take a budget, we have some budget, and have, we have it you know, divided in small stages. For the first stage, we will, let's say, spend 10,000 euros or 20,000 euros. And we model this stage to produce the values worth 10,000 or 20,000 of euros. And then, at the end of this stage, we compare against what? A business case. And we test, did, did, we, did this stage with the, you know, the functionality that has been chosen are producing the results that are at that moment available from the stage that we have delivered? If the answer is yes, then 
we go further. If the answer is no, then we stop the project or we pivot. So this is the, the way we, that we do everything through the project. So stage one, stage two, stage three, and at the end of each stage, we actually compare the results against the business model and value that has been achieved. So this is important for the next step. We need to coach the whole organization, not just the R&D department, research and development department, not just the, the people that are developing the product or service, but the whole, you know, the all stakeholders, they need to know what is our the process. They need to know all the details, not every detail, but enough details so they can make a decision if the value provided is what they have been expected. If there is not enough details, there is a risk that they will say the value has not been achieved. So we need to have this very, very you know, carefully designed. And also, we need to make the business case part of the idea management process. So it's also fluid. It's also you know, prone to change. So from the project management perspective, how it, the, uh, the innovative projects differs from the uh, regular projects. First, it's more uncertain than the project management in, for the regular projects. So there is often we don't have all the inputs. We do not know what would be the outputs. We need, need to research. We need to experiment. We need to try and then you know, test it and so on. And second thing, in the regular process, we avoid changes. We make it very different, difficult changes to be part of the process. There is a change, very complex change management process, which you know, evaluates every change. In the innovative project, is completely different. We need changes. The changes are welcome. And we need to make this process flexible and agile. And this is why we actually choose in the next you know, bullet, agile project management rather than the classic project management, waterfall part. And this is the, the, the one that is right from the innovation projects. Risks. We are managing the risks, but not as formal as in the regular projects. But what is important? Risks are there, and they are much, much higher than in regular projects. And this is acceptable. We are accepting this. But it is very important that everybody in the team are aware about the risks. We are repeating them. We are putting them on the board so everybody, you know, see those risks. And everybody are welcomed and invited to, you know, provide solutions how we can mitigate or how we can, you know, some kind, when risk uh, comes, to do something with this risk. And the collaboration is very important, as I already said, communication between all the people in the team, not just the people that are delivery the projects, the products, but also the people that are the customers that are thinking about the customer experience, that are thinking about how to go to market and so on. So when we are talking about the risk, this is how the risk matrix, the risk profile of innovation projects looks like. So if you go and see on the bottom left side, you see a regular project. It doesn't have a lot of risk because we want in the regular projects to have low risks, we have low impact, and this is something that is acceptable for the regular projects. If you go a little bit right on this slide, then you will see that we have a huge impact, but a low risk. These are probably infrastructure projects. And if you go and see on the right and up, these are generally projects that are avoid, that have high risk and high impact. What we do with such projects, we try to make the impact of the you know, risks lower. And we are trying to move it on the left quadrant where the innovative projects are. So they are highly risky, but the impact of these risks are not so much. So what are the project risk management best practices? As I already said, we need to provide continuous feedback mechanism. You know, through the project, we are not going to, to have a black boxes. We want to make it as transparent as we can. We want to have a daily build. We want to deliver daily a new version which all the you know, customers or 
uh, stakeholders, probably the end users who would be tomorrow a very, very motivated sponsor of the project, they need to be able to feel and use the product or the services. We focus on the business case, ongoing focus. So we are always, as I said, we have stages. At every stage, we are comparing what we have achieved to what we have planned. If we didn't achieve the value and the things that we have you know, planned, then what we are doing? We are either failing and saying the project is not you know, succeeded, or we are changing the business case. We are saying, OK, let's see if we can change the business case and make it the values that are more applicable to the project. Also, we do a pivot. If the project is about to fail, but maybe we can see how we can make it not to fail or use it in some other way, then we do the pivot. We are doing informal risk management assessment, and we spread resources across multiple small projects to reduce risk. What we do, we are doing portfolio management. And this is what is a portfolio management. In our company, what we are actually doing, we have a number of innovative projects are that are going on. And those innovative projects are sharing the same resources, like in development, you know, software development. You have a framework that somebody else is developing. And this framework is used in a different you know, products. The similar thing is with the innovative pro uh, projects. So what we tend to do is to have a portfolio of these innovative projects that can share some resources and making the risk lower, the impact lower, and the cost of the project lower. So what are the advices for the planning innovative projects? The innovative projects are manageable projects. So the first thing on the project initiation meeting, we are actually talking about the protocols, methods, and standards. Doesn't matter if it is innovative. The, what is not innovative, it's not the innovative that we are managing the project. The inno we are managing innovation that happens through the project. So this is a difference. We are agreeing about working norms and procedures. And we are always obligated, all the members of the team, to you know, uh, do everything under these norms and procedures. We are identifying the minimum viable product that we want to ship at the end of each stage and then at the end of the all stages. And we are developing time box plan. Time box plan means we are limiting. So it doesn't matter if we are doing the innovation. You know, delivery is very strictly, the time of delivery is strictly you know, defined. And no, nobody should be late on delivery. So this is very important. And we are doing the prioritizing must-have functionality against the colleague before me that uh, was talking about this technical depth and so on. He was taking, uh, talking about prioritizing things, you know. We are doing always learning and feedback. And this is not just, you know, by, uh, that we are saying that we are doing. We are, because if we are not doing that, then we are not advancing. We are not improving. We are not innovating in our uh, organization. And where the innovation, innovative project took space. So this is idea management process, you know, and project context. So you can see we are defining what we are doing, doing the, you know, what, what the problem is, what we are solving. We have ideation, which were the process of getting from idea to what we actually want to achieve, what we want to improve, what is the value that we, we want to, you know, deliver. We evaluate, we do research, and then we start the innovative project, which starts with defining the business case. And then we have implementation, and you see that our project is going a little bit in this part, manage. The manage part is where the people are, and the implementation part is where the people are important. And because this is a lecture about the project management, I will just emphasize on one person, uh, of course, the, each role in the team has something different than uh, it is in the regular project. So for, the, for example, you can see the project manager in the regular project develops a detailed plan. In innovation project, this is not possible. You need to provide a high level plan, which during this you know, agile process and program management, you actually define a little bit better. 
estimates of the budget are different, you know. So this is done stage by stage, comparing to the regular project, which is, you know, defined at the start. And then there is a coordinates value delivery of project products against the time management on the regular project, and so on, and so on. So as I said, our project is going a little bit far than not just implementation. It doesn't stop at implementation. It goes in something which are often forgotten. This is project handover and so-called bow management, which means business as usual management, because we need to see when we have delivered our product, how this product behaves in real life conditions, not just in our laboratory, testing beds, and so on, or some kind of the sandboxes, but we know you need to, to see if this product really produced the value that we wanted at the beginning of the project. And what we are doing, we are learning, and we are doing a continuous improvement. Of course, because it's project, we need to stop some, sometimes. But what we are doing then, we create a new project. We are doing a new iteration. We are providing a new value. So, as I explained, the process of implementing and managing innovative project is similar to the project management. We are using project management uh, techniques, but all of these techniques are agile. PMI agile, Prince2 agile, or Scrum, or Canvas, or what, whatever Kanban, whatever you know we are using. But the process is not completely different because we are still, you know, here we have some rules that we need to apply. And everybody should work under these rules, norms, procedures, and how we actually has been agreed how we'll do it. At, and, you know, what differs the teams from the teams that are excellent in delivering projects, innovative projects, is how the team actually have been learning from the deliveries that in the past and how these deliveries actually affected and the, the, what has been learned for the future projects. We implement this in the future projects and do this improvement. So for, for all of you that are interested in, in what I have been saying, there is an interest reference, uh, interesting reference paper. It's actually a very short guide, 44 pages, but it's a, a research that uh, my colleagues and me and others you know, from the uh, Richmond Innovation Company has been done. And this is where you can find all of this, what I have been presented in the presentation, and a reference to, of course, the outside resources if you want to do, learn a little bit more. Because, of, co of, of course, in the half an hour, you can explain how the innovative project has been managed. But this is an excellent guide that Project managers, the people that are team members of the innovative uh, projects can use, and also the stakeholders. And it's proven in the practice. It's not just theoretical. It's uh, you know, proven through a number of projects, not just our projects, but our projects all over the world, teams that uh, delivered innovative projects. And that, do not uh, forget that the basis of digital transformation, every digital transformation, is innovation. So in my, my sense, you know, in my mind, all the projects, IT projects that are connected to the digital transformation should be innovative projects. And this is, these are the guides, these are the procedures, how you can make it, and these are advices that I have provided from the practice that you can use a little bit, you know, change and modify how to manage the projects and succeed in delivering innovative you know, products, services, or processes, or advancement in any way. And that's it. <laughs>